Hello, my name is Wade Nomura, and this is Rotary and Serving Our Community. With us today, we have a special guest, uh, Gary Hirsch. Gary, welcome. Thanks, Wade. It's good to be here. Thank you. Thank you. We are going to be talking about the Tour de Tucson, a uh, special event that raises all kinds of money for Polio Plus. Tell us a little bit about yourself there, Gary. What have you been up to, and what oh, are you doing God. now? You know, it seems like the, these days, the big thing in my life is the ride to Polio or the El Tour de Tucson. Um, it's a lot of years to summarize. You know, I've had three or four different careers starting as an industrial electrician, mostly careers dealing with service, helping other people be more successful. Um, uh, first in the natural resources area, moving into management consulting. Uh, at one point I owned a coaching and consulting business that served people on three or four continents. Wow. Um, and then the last career that I settled into, one we discussed, was a career about helping CEOs run their companies more efficiently and more effectively. The aim there ultimately to be, if you can run a better company, it gives you leverage. You know, you can serve one person and indirectly serve potentially hundreds of people. And, and I think for me, Rotary is kind of the epitome, you know, the, the, the peak of that mountain of finding ways to serve other people. Now, how did you get into Rotary? Well, you know, <laughs> it's kind of interesting because uh, I was fairly new to Tucson at the time. And the, this last career of serving CEOs required me to go out and meet folks who ran businesses, and I didn't know very many of them. And a good friend of mine said, you know, Rotary might be a place where you could actually meet the people you're looking for. And so initially it was out of pure greed. You know, I figured <laughs> I'll join Rotary and I'll meet my clients and I'll have everything will be working for me. Well, it didn't work out that way. Um, it, it wasn't necessarily a place for me to recruit clients but it was a place for me to learn really about the essence of service. And so the short answer is, I joined Rotary because somebody asked me to, which is probably a part of the secret formula to grow Rotary, right? Is right. asking right. people to join us. That is true. Now tell us about this bike ride. I think you were one of the originals that started this a few years back, right? Well, I'd like to take credit as the founder. I would say I'm the, the, uh, the uh, original founder's assistant. It was actually <laughs> founded by another Rotarian who uh, left us prematurely, passed on, and I had agreed to be his co-chair. So I inherited the bike ride back in 2009, 2010. Um, and due to, I, I say, a combination of luck and skill and a lot of help from very talented people, have been able to grow it substantially. So what was the first ride like? You know, the first ride was pretty unorganized. I think we had about 20 people riding. They collected donations. and. Uh, I think that year in 2009 we collected about five thousand wow. dollars, but there wasn't, you know, there, there at least in my mind there wasn't much of a, a vision to it at the time. But but I think I was wrong about that. <laughs> and today, what are we looking at as far as the success factor of what's oh, happening there? Oh gosh, you know, in in 2009, as I said, we raised five thousand uh, dollars. Now, when I quote a, a, a the financial number, we're talking about the donations plus all the matches that, that are available through Rotary. So we grew from $5,000 in 2009 to $14.5 million oh, in 2015. Collectively, we typically draw about 100 cyclists per year who come to Tucson, another couple of hundred cyclists who ride stationary bikes, and cumulatively about $25 million. Wow. Uh, and I, the figure I have is that a dose of polio vaccine costs about 60 cents. So mm -hmm. if you do the math, that's a lot of polio vaccine. Very true. And uh, bicycling, was that something that was an interest of yours or something that just happened to be part of an event you envisioned? Well, you know, thinking way, way back, my, first, my second date with my wife was actually a bike ride from Olympia, Washington down to Tenaino. And it, what's funny is it was probably a six or seven mile ride. And we got there and we were so exhausted, we called somebody with a pickup to bring us home. <laughs> um, more recently, uh, about eight years ago, my wife began doing triathlon. Now, you can look at me and see I'm not a natural born triathlete, <laughs> but I can ride a bike. And so she would run and she would swim and she would bike and I would catch up to her on the bike. And it turned out to be a great form of exercise, particularly, you know, as we age, it's kind of kind to the body, and Tucson is a great place to do it. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, pretty tranquil being on a bicycle. 
pretty quiet yeah, out there. Yeah, it's pretty quiet. You know, I mean, you have, you have to watch for cars and critters, but it's a, you know, it's a combination of exercise and fun. I find it kind of meditative. Maybe it's the, the aerobic nature of cycling, but um, some people get their ideas in the shower. I get my ideas on the bike. <laughs> Good. Let's jump into some of the pictures you got because uh, pretty fascinating, very uh, unique, I would say, being in Tucson. Mm -hmm. The first picture we have is a picture of uh, a rider. You want to go through that with us? Uh, he, he's actually not just a rider. <laughs> um, you know, the, the story of the ride is, is very similar to the story of Rotary. The gentleman in this first picture with the big smile is Michael Harris. No relation to Paul Harris, but a similar visionary. Mike had been a CEO of a hospital in Tucson, an early sponsor of El Tour de Tucson. And for, for clarification, El Tour de Tucson is a ride that draws about 8,000 cyclists each year, uh, this year, November 19. Its aim is to get organizations like Rotary, nonprofits, to use it to raise money. Well, for years, Mike Harris uh, petitioned the folks who run El Tour de Tucson to let Rotary participate as a beneficiary. So Mike had the vision, one man with a simple idea that wow. turned into $25 million. <laughs> yeah. That is great. That is very good. And he participates each year, then I, I take it? And Actually, um, I, I co-chaired the first year with Mike. The second year, Mike was uh, president-elect of one of the clubs in Tucson. Mm. And that March, he uh, came down with pancreatic cancer. Mm. And we lost him three months later. Pretty tragic. Um, yeah, still hard to talk about. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so I just, I just, I took his vision and I ran with it. Great, great. Next yeah. picture. Yeah, you probably recognize that gentleman, John Yuko, <laughs> General Yuko. Secretary of Rotary. I included that because um, two or three days before the ride, Perimeter Cycling holds what they call a dedication dinner. Each year, the ride is dedicated to a person or persons who have accomplished something pretty outstanding. John, one year, was actually the, uh, the dedic they call it the dedication recipient. So everyone who got a medal who rode in that ride had a picture of John Yuko on the back of the medal. And John was afforded that uh, recognition as the single largest fundraiser in the history over 32 years of El Tour de Tucson. Wow. Yeah, so pretty big deal. That is. Yeah, and, and the, the next picture actually is a photo of what the medal looks like. Last year, some people may recognize those two folks as Mark Kelly and Gabby Giffords. Gabby is the congresswoman who uh, was shot in Tucson. Her husband, Mark Kelly, is uh, the astronaut who I think has spent, uh, he's got a twin brother who's also an astronaut, spent lots of time up in space. The ride was dedicated to the two of them. Mm. Um, the next couple of photos just are in there to give people a sense of the scope of this ride. Uh, folks who ride the entire distance are riding a 104-mile perimeter of Tucson. Um, it's a pretty tough ride, and there are usually eight to 9,000 people who show up for this ride. So Rotary is a small percent of the population of cyclists, but we raise a very big percentage of the money that's raised. So it's actually a group then. This, this group is organized by, as the uh, Tour de Tucson. Correct. And there are a lot of subgroups then within this one, Rotary being one. There are usually, I think they're up to about 50 charities that oh. are now using it to, to raise money. I mean, none have been as successful as we have in part because of the reach right. that we have. And you can see in the next photo, we tend to congregate and we stand out. Uh, we're pretty easy to spot. <laughs> I see that. Nice uniforms, by the way. Those Indeed. look great. <laughs> the, the people are wearing those uniforms in more countries than I can even cite at this oh. point. Okay. I think I mentioned to you earlier last year we sent 200 of them to Nigeria, which is one of the countries that was most recently declared polio free. Right. right. And the reason for the shirts, those go out as another event, uh, I would say a sister event, something like that? Well, y you know, in, in 2010, we decided that if we were going to have more and more Rotarian cycling, um, we, we wanted to have some unity. We, we, we wanted to know who we were. And so we asked a gentleman in my Rotary Club, who actually appears in the next photo, if he would design a jersey for us. And, and he did. And they truly have um, taken the true meaning of the word ubiquitous. Um, they're all around the world. And when you do this ride, it's hard to miss us. Yeah, <laughs> I can see that. Yeah. Very nice job. Yeah. 
So the picture shows the <clears throat> actual jersey itself as being presented. Is that an award or is that just? Last year we decided that we, we finally, it was time and we had the budget to do something special for Matt Blair, who's the person holding up that okay. framed jersey. Matt was a designer, he did it because he could, didn't charge us anything. In fact, Matt has decided to share the intellectual property of that jersey with Rotary International. Last year at the pre-ride dinner, which we do the evening before the ride, we, we decided it was time to recognize Matt for what he had done. And you can tell he was pretty excited Definitely. about that. <laughs> Very yeah. nice. And the next picture you have? Yeah, the next one is terrific on so many levels. It's also with the dinner. Um, we, we give an award to the folks who come the farthest to ride. Last year, it was a tie. On the left is Bernard Vancia, who came from the Philippines to ride with us. On the right is Prakash Gupta, who came from India. We figured it was so close we would recognize <laughs> both of them. This year, Prakash is bringing two other people from India. And John Yuko was holding a set of stamps. So a, set, a stamp collector might recognize those stamps as an issue that was produced, I think, back in the 50s to celebrate the polio vaccine. They're actually a, a sheet of polio stamps donated by one of our attendees that was auctioned off at the ride and drew in an additional $600. Nice. Yeah. Very nice. Um, following them are our two largest fundraisers for last year, who we recognize at the dinner. Shirley Grace on the left actually is a California Rotarian. Deborah Lowe on the right actually works for Rotary in the major gifts right, department. Right. Between them, they raised over $200,000 last year. Wow. Yeah. Good for them. Uh, by the way, Shirley is also a past governor from just, just ah, north that's of right. so, yeah, yeah. And she is such a joy. I mean, She's she great. just bubbles over with energy. She, she definitely does. great to have at the riot. She loves riding, by the way. She takes her bicycle everywhere with her. And, and she'll be back this year. Good. Good. Yeah. Um, and so the, the, the full ride starts at early morning. You can see people gathering before dark. Um, the ride goes off at 7 in the morning. Okay. If you're doing the full ride, I don't want to scare people who might <laughs> want to come. You don't have to ride 104 miles. You can ride 75 miles. You can ride 55 or 40 or 11 or 5. But if you're going to do the whole thing, it's an early start. And, and the reason I included that is folks who are doing this are making some sacrifice to take the time to collect the pledges, to collect the donations. 104 miles is a pretty good ride. <laughs> That's a good ride. Very yeah. good ride. Um, the, the picture that follows is just a sense of the fun that people have. Um, but the one following that uh, is probably the one year in 32 years that it actually rained on the day of El Tour de Tucson. <laughs> and John Yuko was one of, the, uh, one of the folks who just slogged through the rain and finished 104 miles anyway. Wow. That was a tough day. <laughs> but, so if you're planning on coming to Tucson to ride, don't worry about the rain. There's only a 3% chance on average <laughs> that it's likely to rain. 3%, huh? Yeah. <laughs> okay. One, one, in, one year out of 32. <laughs> okay. And so following that, um, that's my, with Marga Yuko, John's wife, oh, with okay. her arms raised. Um, you know, it, it's fun, it's fellowship, it's celebration, it's accomplishment, all rolled into one wave. It's just a terrific, yeah. terrific day. Um, the, the collage that follows, this is really important for folks who are watching this show and for folks who are going to see it later on who may be in other states or other countries. You don't have to come to Tucson to share in this event. You'll notice these folks are riding stationary bikes. We have the ride to end polio, which happens in Tucson. And we have the indoor ride to end polio, which happens anywhere in the world. There's a stationary bike, military bases, gyms, people's basements. Instead of collecting pledges and donations per mile, you collect them per minute. And in the week leading up to the ride to Enpolio, you hop on a bike and you ride just like anyone in Tucson is going to be riding. So it opens up this event to any Rotarian or friend of Rotarians anywhere in the world. If I remember correctly, the person coming around that corner is John Yuko. That's John. Um, and he, you know, he's just an avid bicyclist who never lets up. <laughs> never lets up. Um, the following picture, I believe, of the two pictures are uh, the first, the Evanston team posing. So that's headquarters? Uh-huh. Rotary headquarters um, there and staff? And staff. The one below without the bicycles are, is the complete Evanston team. The reason I included that is uh, one of the things we do 
is when you finish the ride, when you ride through the, through the finish line, just off to the right, we have a double booth. And so if you're good enough to come ride with us, we'll feed you, we'll give you something to drink, we'll give you a fellowship with other Rotarians, and we'll give you a massage. Yeah, so it, it's worth showing up. It is. Now uh, tell us, uh, since we're going to have John Hugo on one of the <laughs> upcoming shows and episodes, uh, he accomplished quite a feat is, in time-wise on this race. He accomplished actually two great feats for us. Um, if you can finish the 104-mile ride, now when John did it, it was 111 miles. They've changed the route a little bit. If you can finish that in under five hours, you're given the platinum designation, um, which means you get a special medal. It also means that in the subsequent years, you get to start the ride at the beginning of the pack, which is a big deal because if you're number 9,000, you're starting about 20 or 30 minutes after the first cyclist. So the first year John tried to do that, he finished it in five hours and five minutes. Hmm. And you could see the disappointment. The next year he did it in under five hours, and so John is now a platinum rider. But I think, Wade, the, the much more significant thing that John contributed is getting John involved, and, and I need to credit our two of our past district governors, Ernie Montine and Sally Montine, who invited John to come ride. Um, John turned on the turbochargers when it came to fundraising. Mm -hmm. I mean, we were doing pretty darn well, but when John started raising money, it started coming in from all over the world. And one million became two, became four. So he not only supercharged his ride, he supercharged our fundraising. Great. Now, uh, we also operate the largest aid station on the ride. Every 10 miles or so, there's a place to get some snacks and some drinks and fellowship, someone to hold your bike. Um, Charlotte Harris is the person who's pouring the water in this picture. Charlotte is Mike Harris's wife, the founder of the ride. Right. Charlotte is the one who actually connected Mike and I and is the reason that I'm probably involved in this ride at all. Um, following that, I don't know, have you ever seen this trailer, Wade? The, <laughs> the end polio now trailer? I actually have seen that trailer. <laughs> uh, I, I, I know that uh, Swift Trucking moves it for us. I don't know if it's used as a regular trucking trailer. It may be, but we managed to get it at our aid station. And so everyone, every cyclist who rides the El Tour, regardless of the distance, passed that trailer last year. And so they know what Rotary is about, at least for us. Great. I think that's o owned by um, past governor Greg Owen. If I'm not I think you're right. Yeah, uh, I think, he did a I few of those right. wraps. The picture after the trailer is actually just Rotarians congregating at the finish line in our booth at the finish line, as is the subsequent one of John posing with our, our cyclists from the Philippines and from India, some of his team. And then uh, on the left, um, to actually to John's right, but on the far left of the picture, there's a gentleman named Bob McKenzie who has accomplished some exceptional things for us. Bob is a member of the Rotary Club of Tulsa. And up until last year, Bob has been our single largest fundraiser, not including John. And John actually asks that he be in a category of his own. But it's not unusual for Bob to have raised $60,000 a wow. year. Equally impressive, Bob was part of a four or six person Rotary team this year that did the ride across America which just finished up, I think, maybe three or four weeks ago. And I forget how much money they raised doing that, but it was significant. So you give me enough time to rest, at least, between now Between and events, yeah. We, we, it's we, nice of you. <laughs> we, always hope, we always hope Bob will show up for our ride. <laughs> Very good. Um, and it's hard not to recognize a good massage when you see one, right? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Very true. Outstanding. Now, time-wise and planning-wise, how long does this actually take for you to plan an event? I know it's year to year, but... Well, we're fortunate, you know, we get, we get a, a request from folks who ask if we can help them organize a ride like the ride we do. And, and, and the blessing we have is that Perimeter Cycling has been putting on El Tour de Tucson for 32 years. And so uh, that's a $2 million venture that we kind of jump on. And so we don't have to plan the whole ride. We just have to plan Rotary's participation in the ride. And so. Um, the ride occurs in November. We started our, our serious planning about two months ago. Uh, normally what comes first is we try to assemble as many Rotary dignitaries as we can to come participate very selfishly because with them usually comes fundraising. 
and our, our planning ramps up the closer we get to November. It's kind of like the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. You know, the day after Thanksgiving, we kind of start planning for the following right, year. Right. Uh, <laughs> so um, success-wise, and I think this is huge, um, Rotary International and the foundation sets a goal for what it wants to accomplish as far as fundraising each year. How does your project fit into that as far as percentage-wise? I hear it's, it's huge. My understanding is that Rotary's goal for a uh, fundraising goal for polio for this Rotary year is about $110 million. You know, Wade, we never know how much money we're going to raise, but yeah. if we look at how much we raised last year, this ride would account for somewhere between 10 and 15 percent of Rotary's entire annual goal. That is amazing. Yeah, that, uh, is, that is outstanding. When you consider it's just a bike ride. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of fun. The idea, the idea is great. Uh, no uh, doubt about that. Now let's talk about the route. I know the route you say goes around the perimeter of Tucson. A lot of hills? Um, depends on the route you choose and, okay. and it's a great topic because folks might be wondering if it's something they can do. Yeah. So if you're an avid cyclist, if you're used to riding hills, the 104 mile route has a little bit of everything. Um, there are probably two or three, four really good hills to ride. You wind up riding through a couple of river washes and for mm -hmm. folks who are not from the desert, a river wash looks a lot like a river with no water. <laughs> um, so it's a, it's a pretty varied route. You know, there are aid stations every 10 miles or so, but there's a 75 mile route, which is a little bit easier. There's a 40 mile route, which is very flat. If somebody wants to just come and volunteer, they can work at the aid station, they could work at the finish line, they can do a five mile fun ride. You don't have to work really hard. You can work as hard as you like. Um, but there's so much to do, mm -hmm. so much to do. Now, age-wise, tell us the oldest one, if you know, and the, and the youngest one of the participants that you've seen. Oh, gosh, so I, so I won't use Ernie's name. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to do that. <laughs> uh, uh, Ernie is probably one of our older oh. cyclists. You know, I mean, Rotary is, yeah. is a bit of an older crowd. Ernie's uh, at least 70 years old, and... Um, Prakash from India plans to do the 104 mile ride this year and Ernie said he would ride with Prakash and so Ernie and I have both done the full rides. Um, the youngest cyclist last year um, I think was 13, 13 wow. or 12, okay. um, who did about 40 miles with his dad. So you know there, b because the shorter distances are available there's really no age that can't participate. You can bring a five-year-old on a tricycle to ride a quarter mile <laughs> if you like. But the route is a circumnavigation of Tucson. You ride the entire perimeter hmm. of Tucson. So where would they find this? Is it a website? I'll give you a little plug time here. Absolutely. <laughs> if you, um, so one really important thing is if you're coming to Tucson to ride, please, please, please register at our site, not at the perimeter bicycling site. It's a very easy site to remember, ride to endpolio.org. You'll find registration information, hotel information, links to perimeter cycling, everything you need is there, in, including hopefully this show at some point. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the show will be there for yeah. you. <laughs> no, that, that is outstanding, it's great. Dinner, um, the dinner's included, how many people do you see at that dinner? Last year we had about 100 people. Um, the dinner runs about $20, $25 or so. It's a celebration. Um, yeah, I mean, what we're doing really is worthy of a celebration. And uh, there's, I would say, quite a few Rotary dignitaries that are going to be there. And I know you can't give all of their names. Well, sworn we, to secrecy we, we, we on know, that. We know that John and Margo are bringing a team from Evanston. Uh, we know that at least a couple of people very high up in the Rotary organization will be coming. And I've been asked not to yet share who they are. But you know, um, Everybody takes off their, their hat when they show up for the event. Everyone's just a Rotarian, just out there to help raise money to fight this disease. Great. Well, thank you very much for your time and sure. effort. I know you, uh, you actually had to fly in here from Tucson. You're flying back shortly, so appreciate your time and the great work you're doing. It's a pleasure, Wade. Thanks okay. for having thank me. You. And with that, thank you very much for joining us. Take a look at that Tucson tour ride because it sounds like a lot of fun. You don't have to be a great, uh, great rider to get a lot of enjoyment out of it, but it is definitely benefiting Rotary and the world by ending polio. Thank you, and we'll see you next time.